Hello, this is Russ Buecher from Control My Nikon, and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at what's changed in Control My Nikon version 3.0 compared to version 2.9. And version 3.0 has a lot of new features. We fixed up some bugs, and uh, we're going to take a look at them here. But let's start up Control My Nikon version 3.0. Let's double click on the icon. And one of the first things you'll notice compared to the old version is on the very first page you see a lot of these things here. And this is help. There's a lot of new help built into Control My Icon. And previous versions really didn't have any help. It only had instructional videos um, on the internet. So uh, now when you click on one of these items here for help, for example, how do I connect to a camera? It brings up a help window. And then you can click on these links to take you to a video tutorial on the internet or to deeper within the help. So there's a lot of good information in the help and you can also access it now through the help menu too. New in version 3 is D5100 support. So now that Nikon has released the SDK for it, we have uh, included this and the D5100 is, is a nice little camera in that it has a lot of the features of D7000, but it has that nice articulating live view uh, LCD screen, uh, real handy for video. I currently have a D7000 camera hooked up to my Windows 7 PC, 64-bit, and I have a Nikon 105mm macro lens on it. So I'm just going to connect by clicking on the connect button. And uh, one of the things that's a little bit different here is uh, you'll notice there's a calibrate button here and this allows you to quickly do a uh, white balance calibration. And if I go into the settings tab, we have a new way to do a reset of the counter. You can actually reset it to a, a, a particular value now instead of resetting it back to zero. The sounds uh, are now functioning. They weren't functioning on version 2.9. And if I go down to the bottom right hand corner, this is the, um, the current profile or the collection of settings that are currently loaded for Control My Nikon. That used to show on the uh, form caption up top, but now it's in the bottom right hand corner. Control My Nikon version 3 also brings keyboard shortcuts. Before there was hard-coded keyboard shortcuts, you couldn't change them, uh, but now you can. So there's a lot of different functionality uh, that you can map to uh, a key. And it also has the ability to use a PowerPoint remotes. So you know those uh, cheap remotes a lot of people have along with their laptops and they're controlling uh, PowerPoint presentations with them. Well, those remotes are actually little mini keyboards and you can get them wired or, or wireless and you can map the buttons on those small, inexpensive PowerPoint remotes to functions within Control My Icon. So it makes a really good remote. So in addition to these keyboard shortcuts, we've redid the uh, remote triggers and you can uh, trigger Control My Icon from any uh, web browser. That includes um, a smartphone browser. And before our triggers used to uh, needed to uh, connect to Control My Icon with an IP address and a port, but you no longer need to do that. So it's a lot easier to configure. Here on this web trigger, you just specify what your listening address is for your web server. And, uh, and then you can control your camera with a web page. And the sound trigger, same thing, it's simplified. The speech trigger. The speech trigger is being rebuilt a little bit uh, to give it uh, better performance, so it used up less CPU and memory from the previous version. And there's a lot more functionality in it. Uh, you can see that it's attempting to recognize my voice here, giving its best guess. Um, but uh, there's a lot more commands that you can map. And we also have the fidgets trigger. And these were quite popular in the previous version. A lot of people hooking up robotic sensors to trigger the camera. So easier triggers. 
but we've also added bracketing. This doesn't use the in-camera bracketing, but actually scripts the bracketing for you within the Control My Nikon application. So for example, if you wanted to take a uh, HDR image sequence and you wanted to take uh, one image and then another image that's um, uh, a little bit lighter, another image a little bit darker, and then merge those together, you could easily do that here. You can do that in several different ways. You can adjust the exposure compensation or change the shutter speed. Or if you didn't want to change the exposure really, but just change the aperture for aperture bracketing, you can do that as well. Okay. We also have an intervalometer and this is really uh, the window you'd use to do a time lapse. So you can have Control My Nikon start capturing a sequence of images at any particular time, a date and time, and ending at any particular date and time. Or you could tell it to capture an image every X amount of seconds, um, to stop after a certain amount of captures. And you can even chain this with the bracketing. So you could capture, for example, a, an entire time lapse of a sunset that is HDR. It gives you a lot of images to process, but it is possible. Okay, let's take a look at the new things in live view. Now I've set up uh, just a basic flower here. This is a, a, a flower that's just sitting on a pile of hydrogel beads. These are beads that you throw in the water, they expand and turn blue. Very, very cool things, give some nice light. Um, but anyways, the, the big difference you could see on the live view is the histogram. This is a live view histogram and it's recording exactly what you're seeing here. So uh, now this is very useful if you're using hot lights or continual lighting and you want to set up the lights just right to get the proper exposure. So for example, I could reach over here and turn off the main light and you can see it's just a lot, a lot darker. And I'll bring that up or I could turn off the backlighting. And I'll bring it back up. So this just allows you to very easily ensure that you have the proper exposure. Now there's a lot of things you can do with this histogram. Uh, you could do forward and reverse tracking on it so you can identify exactly what parts of the image have been affected by the histogram. So if you're wondering, what is this big peak here in the luminance histogram? You just click and select it and it tells you exactly where it is. Or you could go the other way. You could say, I wonder what this dark area is. You just hold down the left mouse button and you get the little crosshairs. And now you can see on your histogram, those vertical lines, it's telling you where the pixel under the cursor is in the histogram. So if you want to know where this light blue is up here, yeah, it's way up there. So very handy for uh, setting your uh, exposure. Now you can also use live view histograms on the, on the D5100 and the D7000 for shooting movies. So I could just click on vid plus here that starts recording. And if, you're, if this was a video, now you're seeing the exact live histogram as you're recording. And I'm just gonna stop shooting. Now, in addition to this, we also have the uh, the focus pad, and that really hasn't changed too much since last time. It does have some built-in help for it, and we made it a little bit more responsive, so it's easier to focus. So I'm just going to focus a little bit here, and if all else fails, you can just double-click on the image, click on AF, and that will focus for you. You can zoom in on it by just clicking on in. And that's going to zoom in on the exact area that you focused previously. So this allows you to look really close to see that you've got the focus exactly where you want it. We also have the ability to use image overlays in live view. And this basically allows you to take an image, modify it in Photoshop, and then lay it on top of the image you see here. And that's great if you'd like to do before and after photos, so you can ensure that your composition is exactly lined up like before, or stop motion photography. Or you could even create additional guides for a video and, uh, and just have it always overlay your live view image.
let's see what else we have. We have focus stacking. And uh, on the focus stacking here, this hasn't really changed too much uh, in this new version, uh, but it does give you a little bit better performance now on slow computers so you can capture that stack and still have your live view properly updated. And you still have the loop so you can magnify, but this is really only magnifying the digital uh, image that's being sent to you by the camera. Uh, as always, Nikon only sends you a 640 by 480 image, even though this image here is probably about 4500 by oh, 3200. Um, it's, it's shrinking it down for you and that's all you see. So it, sometimes it can look a little bit grainy in the live view. You can also show thirds. Now, in addition to those things that we have here in Live View, we also have some new options. So if I go to my Tools menu and Preferences, on certain cameras, and that is on a um, D700, a D7000, and D5100, you could save it to the card. So you just put a check mark here, and then the image that you capture are automatically transferred uh, from your camera to the computer and a copy of it will be saved onto your card. We've added some new themes as well and a new theme selector. So by default, this is a theme. This is the old cold theme that you saw in uh, version um, 2.9. Now you can easily just select a theme. This is a new theme here called web. And you can use your up and down arrows here to cycle through the different themes. Just find one that uh, is easiest on your eyes. And uh, one more thing that we have here in Live View is we have uh, different aspect ratios. So right now we're in a four to three aspect ratio. And this is uh, normally the image as it comes off your sensor uh, for a still image. But if you're shooting video and, uh, and you're shooting in a, it's basically a 16, point, uh, 16 by nine format, um, you could set it to 16 by nine. So this is what it's gonna look like on your video. Now, if you wanna go a little bit further and say, well, uh, I want extreme widescreen, uh, then you could set it to 2.39 to 1. Now that isn't actually cropping your video, however, that's what it would look like if you crop it in post-processing. So I'll put it back to 4 to 3. One of the new things we have is a new image viewer. And uh, for version 2.9, we had an image viewer that was based on your graphic card acceleration and it used OpenGL and you know it worked pretty good uh, it was somewhat fast uh, but we had a lot of compatibility problems in it so uh, whenever uh, you know a lot of netbooks and with lower powered uh, graphics cards just didn't like it at all and it, it wouldn't work so we decided to standardize this a bit more and go back to a non-GPU accelerated image browser and greatly simplify the image browser. And you know the reason for that is that uh, it takes a lot of development time to create a decent image browser. And there's a lot of great image browsers out there and everybody has their favorite, it seems. So we decided to just go back to a very a basic image browser. And we'll take a shot of this flower. Okay, so we have a histogram, and you can see that the histogram comes out basically exactly the same as we had here, showing the same distribution of intensities. And, uh, you know, you could rotate the image, you could turn a loop on and off to take a closer look at it, but that's it. It really doesn't do anything more. You can't go, uh, say, onto your C drive and explore folders and open up other images. So it's meant to be very simple, uh, but fast. Now, as an alternative, you know, you have um, Nikon produces uh, uh, View NX2, which is free, and uh, there's a lot of other great image browsers out there, and all you need to do on those image browsers is set a watch folder on it and dump your files from Control My Nikon into that folder, and it immediately shows up on, the, on their image browser. So, uh, so this is a big change. That's what's new in version three. 
Happy tethering. <laughs>